Hi everyone, this is a video primarily for the players in my group, but you guys can make use of it too, or you need. This is about the Mutant Year Zero sub-game Elysium. It can be played as part of an overarching Mutant Year Zero campaign, or as a standalone. Now, uh, I've got some other videos on this subject. What I'm doing in this video is, basically, I've decided not to run Elysium. There's not enough time, probably not enough interest, and although I do need the information of what happened in Elysium to be sitting there in the in the minds of the players so that they've had that experience. They've already played Gen Lab, they've already played Mechatron. I'm setting them up to play Year Zero with the Mutants, the main first game. So it'd be quite nice to at least let them know a summary of what the campaign would have looked like had it been played. And this is just going to save so much more time because there's so much else we have to play. <laughs> so uh, this is obviously <clears throat> full of spoilers and getting to the heart as quickly as I can of what the campaign would have looked like. So here it is. Yes, you you would be, and, and also, you know, you GMs that want to give this to your players because you don't want to play Elysium, but you'd like them to have experienced a summary of what the campaign would have been. There you go. Let's do it. Uh, you, the players, you would have played some of the privileged cl persons um, in the upper echelon class of Elysium that operate from the crown, the, the top part, that's got, you know, the widest... Um, spaces and, 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 and that is most looked after uh, you would be members of the four ruling houses and you know that distribution through the team of those four ruling houses it all gets a bit dune in that way doesn't it and yeah you basically play as a police force kind of you're called adjudicators so you turn up to these different incidents and you try to solve them but the one that the one who secretly instigated the incident from their house they can gain to they can gain from the incident basically going wrong and the party failing it so then you can sort of point fingers and accuse party members of sabotage and, and all that kind of thing and the incidents are um there's a few of them there's uh things like censorship where someone was trying to do um a, a murder um uh, and, and cause a lot of trouble in a theatre. And um, there's also these reoccurring NPCs, for example. Um, and that's the thing. So, like, uh, you get to know them over the course of, of going out to these different incidents. And there's eight different incidents in the book. And when I was planning on, on playing it, I was only looking at maybe six of the incidents running anyway. Uh, maybe just skipping the last couple and there's there's stuff like epidemic where there's um, like a return of the red plague there within within the, um, within Elysium uh, there's kidnapping there's murder there's there's riots there's a strike to investigate there's, there's different stuff like that um, so they go off and they explore all these different things and they start to get the idea that do you know what we are we actually the bad guys? I suppose it's it's a bit like that Mitchell and Webb sort of uh, scene, isn't it? Where it's like, are we the baddies? <laughs> where they where they play uh, some Nazi Germans, and it's, I suppose like if you did find yourself being recruited there as a soldier in Nazi Germany, you might have turned around and sort of said, "Wait, oh, are we the bad guys?" You know, you really might have, mightn't you? You know, of course you couldn't voice it. But um, uh, so it's an interesting idea and how, how much the players want to lean into that and lean into helping, helping their house versus their social responsibility towards their enclave, the collective, and also their responsibility to themselves as a character. So it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic there that you, you, you could explore. Um, <clears throat> then, of course, there are special incidents that these campaigns always have. They always have like um, some set in stone milestone incidents, missions or whatever you'd call them, plot points, basically. And these basically dictate the length of the campaign and the speed at which 
you drop them and uh there's there's normally like an end campaign one that a plot point that ends the campaign so you run all the other stuff and that's all optional and you draw that out as long as you want and that but you know you drop these as basically to measure your campaign so after about say four incidents out of the eight that's when you'd run the first special incident here which is signal from gen lab alpha and the idea is that this is a big spoiler for gen lab alpha by the way uh at the end of gen lab alpha a uh, dropship turns up from Elysium and the dropship that turns up actually contains the people from this that it contains also the player character party so you turn up and get to then speak to the animals and in our case the players played the animal characters so they would have been playing their characters in communications with their other characters in the past so they know how it worked out for our group and it went violently um and you know they f would fall back to the uh to the to the drop ship and take off and, and leave and say you know after a bit of a look around and check the facility and and pick up this and that and whatever they they find there um yeah uh and then basically the incidents carry on and then when you've played as many incidents as you want back in the enclave so they'd realize what the state of gen lab is and that the animals have left and that that's the state of the Elysium run facility. And they get to see that and actually play it from the other side. But they'd have the emotional connection of turning up as the players, as the other side, and not knowing they were going to do that. So that would have been quite cool. Um, yeah. Uh, and then it goes into a day to remember eventually. So say after all the incidents have, have been run. And you're supposed to um, uh, guard Memorial Day. And so, which is up, you know, in the crown at the Winter Gardens area. And it's, it's basically like an annual celebration thing. But a bunch of these cyborg uh, machine guards turn up and there's like, a, there's like an, an, an attack on it. And they're trying to kill the leaders and... Um, of the four houses and you know do you save them or do you not and you know the player characters attempt to save them and that all happens and then you know a screen comes on and there's this whole thing about um from from creon um uh who is leader of the eminences now the idea of the eminences i better describe this because this is really important the eminences were all people that lived uh before the fall in the world that was this world now and basically, um, <clears throat> after the fall, they got put in cryo and only released um, on a cycle of uh, once every decade for a year. And, you know, there's like um, 10 of them. And so they only release um, like, you know, you, you, one, one, one eminence is awake and the other nine are asleep, basically, in a cryo thing. And so they help to run the enclave for a year then they go to sleep for you know the 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 decade or so and then uh the next one in line wakes up and it go, it just rotates like that so that their lives can be uh drawn out and so that the old values and guidance from the past can be there to help the houses um maintain the correct kind of forward momentum and not get lost um in the smaller picture and actually try to remember what humanity was supposed to be like and what the larger world idea was um <clears throat> however this doesn't sit with the current um climate of the way the four houses operate because the four houses now want a more of a totalitarian kind of rule and it's really come to a head that the eminences have to stop the four houses because of their level and degree of corruption and that they're, you know, they're inciting all these incidents to happen and keeping uh, it in misery. And so the, the, the essentially the eminences uh, in a kind of grey area are sort of the good guys and you as the party get sent out after them. So again, it's that reverse thing. I mean, it could be argued that they are also the bad guys. And then it's kind of grey versus grey with different varying shades, depending on your 
perspective, I suppose, is the way to look at it. Uh, and, you know, the enclave itself gets completely taken over by um, Orion. The people just uprise and, and these machine guards have, have come in and they and, and, and it's all taken over and locked down. And um, the enclave is is kind of lost to the uprising that the eminences had planned, uh, essentially. And so then the team gets sent on one final uh, mission to attack Cryolab Delta, which is where the eminences are. So they get given some reconnaissance armor, which has got like these jet wings thing that they, um, strapped to the back of the armor and they can fly for a short period. So they get to go over land again. Because that's the other thing. The four houses have been lying to everyone about the state of the zone above the world above um saying that it's inhabitable still uh when when the reverse is actually true and when the players go out and off, off obviously to go visit uh gen lab alpha they'll see that the reverse is true and see that that they've been lied to yet they are the officials that are supposed to as their job be maintaining those lies over the masses and how do the players and how do the characters feel about that are they going to go along with it? Are they going to question it? Both ways are fine. Um, that's what these books basically suggest. You know, if you want to end the end, end the the thing there, and they just choose neither side, and and um, when they get sent, you know, above ground to uh, head for Cryolab Delta, if they want to just walk away um, and, and, and sod both sides and just go out into the zone, that's where the campaign ends um, organically. Uh, if they actually want to get to the eminences and, and switch sides and join the eminences, they can do that. And, um, you know, there's there's no clear cut good and bad here. You know, that's it's really up to up to the group to figure that out. So the idea is you basically um, uh, you, you'd you'd head there uh, for for the cryo lab, get through their guards, if that's the way you're doing it um, and get to the eminences and um, that's where you would start to find out of um, the uh, the information, like um, Project Titan um, uh, research into the Academy archives has uncovered interesting findings. Uh, Project Titan carried out in Elysium Four by Chief Scientist uh, Kaiser Kilgore. Now that's interesting because Kaiser Kilgore. That's obviously a name. Uh, the name of the cyber um, is from the Kilgore house that, um, again, spoilers, um, uh, Gen Lab Alpha spoilers, uh, the brain in the jar at the bottom of the Gen Lab Alpha um, labyrinth, um, in other words, facility, uh, purpose the creation of a xenogenetic organism with the ability to assimilate the memories, intellectual capacity and psionic abilities of other organisms. Eight prototypes were created. Results unclear. The project was interrupted when Elysium 4 was targeted by an orbital attack. Kaiser Kilgore's fate is unknown. His daughter Beatrice Kilgore, that's her, apparently survived the attack. Further investigation is recommended. Um, also, these eminences you know, have this kind of spooky psionic interconnected ability between each other as well they can feel each other and um and uh in a sort of psychic way and the other thing was that uh while the other nine were asleep they were all able to communicate with the awake one as a, and that's not like known information the eminences only know that information so they're able to get like become like a super powered mind but <clears throat> at this time of state of emergency within the enclave, um, instead of one uh, eminence being awake, they are in fact all awake <clears throat> right now, and like eight of them or so are are in this vicinity. Well, seven immediately. Creon's not immediately in the lab. Two are out on an away mission somewhere, so they're obviously setting that up so that you could potentially run into eminences in another campaign book somewhere, somehow. Um, another important handout that they've deemed a, a handout there is Eminence Thalia. Um, the Academy Archives mentioned the Aros facility. Uh, big, big there, whoa. 
um, originally established by Elysium 4 for the purpose of monitoring the surface environment, along with the deployment of xenogenetic creatures. Um, GenLab Alpha was basically xenogenetic creatures. That was an experiment to um, try to create something um, perfect that, that, that was unspoiled by the Red Plague and, and the Fall and everything, and all of the mistakes that mankind had made to try and see if animals um, could do it better. Um, personnel in cryogenic uh, sleep on site, control of Uriel 3, eye in the sky possible. Low contamination in the area makes it a good location for farming and fishing. Again, all of this, you know, is a real hotbed of something that completely contradicts what the four houses are saying. But this Aros facility, you know, it's a big kind of, it's a big name drop. It's almost like a foreshadowing of the whole, of what could spring off of that from the overarching meta. Because all of these games tie together as in an overarching meta. Um, conclusion, optimal location for establishment of major surface settlement for the recolonization of the outer world. Geographical position of Aros is currently unknown. Further explanation, exploration is a priority. So, yeah, um, got a feeling that, that you know, the, the eminences that are out exploring for this Aros facility, I, if I recall correctly, to find this, I believe that's the thing. So maybe the other add-on for Ad Astra will cover that. Yeah, maybe. Um, and the other handout, uh, incidents report from Eminence Creon, the essentially the current leaderish one of them. Uh, contact established with Eminences in Cryosleep in Elysium Three and Elysium Seven. So basically, all of the Elysiums have Eminences. And um, uh, Elysium 4, uh, yeah, it got hit by that orbital bombardment and, and all that happened. But there are other Elysiums and they've managed to make, I guess, psychic contact or whatever with these sleeping ones. And as we've said, the, 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 the cryo sleeping ones can communicate because they're all set up to be able to do their telepathic, pathic, woo-wah. Um, so they've... Creon's made connection to two other Elysiums. Communication is garbled, status unclear, eminences Proteus and Rhea sent to investigate and establish contact. Okay, that's what the eminences are off doing. They're off exploring those two Elysiums. So Aros, that's, an, that's a bit of an unknown. Who knows, maybe players will have to investigate that. Yeah, so hey, there we go. Um, and so the whole attack happens, um, if it happens that way, on the cryo lab there. Um, yeah, the psychotronics, that's what the eminence is kind of interlinking power is called. And that's a that's a thing, it, it both goes for them and against them. So there'd be a number of NPCs present and they'd be trying to defend the eminences and the different kinds of things there and the sort of battle that may happen. And then Creon himself can turn up and sort of... Um, how how it plays out is is kind of up to the way the players do it. Um, <clears throat> also, the other reason that the players get sent on this mission into you know wipe out the eminences is because of, because the four houses tell the party that the uh, the eminences have control of the Omega Protocol, which is a plan created when Elysium One was being built. <clears throat> its purpose was twofold. To prevent the Enclave from ever falling into enemy hands and to guarantee that the Enclave leadership could never be overthrown by an inner threat. The plan consists of two phases. Um, and uh, we'll get to that in a sec. But they're saying basically the eminences have control of the Omega Protocol. So you need to stop them because it's basically it's a terrorist weapon in their hands because they, they've decided to, you know, be traitors and overthrow the enclave but who's the bad guys here in phase one of omega, omega protocol a deadly nerve gas is released into the enclave from hidden canisters it is a dense gas that accumulates in the deep first that's the working classes always get it don't they first as the enclave is filled by the gas it rises upwards it takes about 30 minutes for the gas to reach the core and another 30 to get to the crown this 
phase will trigger total panic as people desperately try to escape from the deep, seeking refuge higher in the enclave. The gas, which is invisible but has a sweet smell, is treated as an attack with nine base dice, blah, 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 yada, yada. <clears throat> in phase two, a large number of hidden charges are detonated. The explosions trigger a chain reaction, causing all floors of the Enclave to collapse. Anyone still inside the Enclave when Phase 2 commences will be immediately killed or trapped uh, far underground amidst a twisted labyrinth of rubble. The goal of the Council is to force the Temple's forces to the Crown. So basically, the Temple of the Eminence is here. That, that They're people that have taken over. Because... They're saying, oh, quick, the eminences have got the Omega Protocol. But guess what? They don't. The uh, the Council of the Four Houses do. So they lie to the players even in that. Um, so they're trying to force them up as they flee from the poison gas, where the bulk of the Deep Watch will be waiting for them to finish them off. They're basically trying to flush them out so that they can shoot them, gun them down. Um... But, you know, basically destroy all their, their forces, their uh, army of novices and machine guards, kill a bunch of innocents. But, you know, that's a price that the Desperate Council is prepared to pay. By the way they see it, the power of the houses must, under no circumstances, be broken. Their rule must be absolute. OK, uh, the Council intends to stop the Omega Protocol before the gas reaches the core. And before phase two triggers in the whole boom. Okay. Except they've made a grave miscalculation. Because what they don't realise, and perhaps the eminences do realise, because remember, you know, everyday life for, for um, the people of the council, of the four houses, is completely out of context for something that was designed way back in the past. The Omega Protocol, what they don't realise, cannot be stopped once it has been activated. And so it gets activated. And so all that's happening. And then obviously, if the council then try to switch it off, there'll be this desperate sort of thing. So if the players, for instance, turn and try to go back and, and, and all this, they'll realise that, that that whole thing is happening. And so once they realise that it can't be stopped... Um, it's just going to be a mass panic evacuation. And basically the Enclave will just go boom, 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 boom. And just sink into the ground. And a bunch of people will be, will be buried there um, under it all. And some will get out onto the surface. So that, you know, um, uh, actual untainted humans. Humans, though, who have a... Uh, propensity towards cybernetic enhancement that's kind of elysium's thing they love doing that um and a bunch of these will you know en end up um on foot and on the surface uh perhaps hundreds perhaps thousands of people pouring out through the breach getting to see the sky for the first time breathing fresh air for the first time um People falling to their knees, shocked by the experience. Um, others injured in the fighting or affected by the gas, follow behind with the help of others. The thunder of heavy explosions in the depths announces the final phase of the Omega Protocol. All 84 levels of the Enclave fall one after another. The city's alleys and buildings are crushed as they collapse into the abyss. Elysium 1 is no more. The long atomic winter is over. A new dawn is here. A new kingdom will be built and kind of like the way the players um uh, worked with that did they did they help the eminences did they um did they destroy the eminences either way omega protocol was going to happen but you know it would have been a test or if you run it a test of of your characters for um for what they would do in in the face of that so do you know what there's lots of different ways it could have ended and you could consider like you know what you would have done had you been uh playing that campaign um and it's thoughtful isn't it in the end uh it's a very very uh evocative powerful way of finishing and these things do always tend to end in a in a very 
powerful plot point. I do like that. It's just like a very definitive uh, wrap up the way they finish these campaigns. So there we have it, guys. That's Elysium uh, explained as quickly as I can to you. Um, if you're a GM that maybe uh, wants to um, consider running this, you know, that's the outline. That's the feel of the campaign. Now you know it. You can decide if you want to run it. But, um, you know, uh, I've got other things to, to, to worry about trying to do, as well as all the D&D &D campaigns and all of the other free league things and maybe looking at Mortborg and, and all the other things. But anyway, until the next video, I'll see you at the table.